welcome to our first recorded worship experience. I pray for all of you and hope that you all are in prayer for our world. And may this worship experience be a blessing to all of us. As you know, church will, uh, worship will not happen this Sunday here in the sanctuary or next Sunday, March 29th. And we will do our best to keep you informed as to any further changes to our Sunday worship schedule. Both our contemporary and traditional worship services will be available by Friday on our website at fumcbrooksville.com, also via the church's YouTube channel or the church's Facebook page. Please continue to support your church financially by mailing your gifts, tithes, or offerings to 109 South Broad Street, Brooksville, Florida, 34601, or through our online giving portal. You can find the information about online giving at fumcbrooksville.com. If there's anything you need, please don't hesitate to contact us at 352-796-3363, Monday through Thursday, or leave a message and we'll get back to you ASAP. You may also contact me directly at pastorfumc9255 at gmail.com. Let's pray. Lord, as we enter into this time of worship, I pray for your blessing to be upon each and every family. I pray that uh, even though we're not together, that we'll feel each other's presence and that you'll be there with each of us. So that when we're done, Lord, we'll know that we actually have been in worship. So we're gathered together, Lord, to hear what you have for us. Bless us with your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to read to you this morning from Luke chapter 12, beginning at verse 22 and going through verse 26. And I'll be reading from the uh, Passion Translation. Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Listen to me. Never let anxiety enter your hearts. Never worry about any of your needs, such as food or clothing. For your life is infinitely more than just food or the clothing you wear. Take the carefree birds as your example. Do you ever see them worry? They don't grow their own food or put it in a storehouse for later. Yet God takes care of every one of them, feeding each of them from his love and goodness. Isn't your life more precious to God than a bird? Be carefree in the care of God. Does worry add anything to your life? Can it add one more year or even one day? So if worrying adds nothing, but actually subtracts from your life, why would you worry about God's care of you? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we begin, I'm going to tell you a story just like I do every Sunday, and then we're going to take... Uh, two minutes to listen, just as we do, to bring as much normality to what we're experiencing this day. Um, a woman tells the story of having gone through unsuccessful cancer surgery and following up with chemo in Houston, which meant a 500-mile round trip from her home in central Texas. The trips were exhausting enough, but the chemo made her feel sick to death. She lost her appetite, her hair, and her will. Wallowing in fear and self-pity, she heard God say, plan a Christmas pageant that would bring the story to life for her grandchildren. She said yes, despite her fears that her children would think it was corny. She got to work taking the plot for the script right out of the Gospel of Luke. She assigned roles to her family members unbeknownst to them. She began making the costumes. As she worked, she felt new life come to her. She enlisted her husband to make the star in the east and the shepherd crooks in his workshop. Finally, the holiday arrived. And after Christmas Eve dinner, when everything was cleaned up and the leftovers were put away, they set up the scene, handed out the costumes and the printed instructions. When everyone was ready, she began to read the story from the announcement of the angel to Mary to the arrival of the wise men. And as they laid their gifts at the foot of the manger, they sang, Silent Night, Away in the Manger, and Joy to the World. 
As the last notes hung in the air, no one could move, for they all felt God's warm presence with them. And then she writes, And at that closeness, I left my fear behind. My soul was light, a newborn light that God had been leading me to for six months. So you see, if you're stricken by illness or misfortune, in other words, if life doesn't make sense, finding, find something worthwhile to do for God, and then do it. Don't be afraid. Go. Don't let your life or your fear distract your life, but give your life to God and let God direct your life. You'll be amazed at the difference it will make. Let's take the next two minutes and just listen. Lord, I thank you that through the, in the midst of all the difficulties we're going through, that you're still here, that you're still speaking to us, even as you're hearing our prayers. And so, Lord, as we look more deeply into your word, I ask that you would continue to talk to us. Help us to hear your voice, to see your face, and feel your presence as we gather to worship. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as we continue to the effects of this current epidemic, I thought it would be important to change my sermon for today from what I had planned. Today, I titled my sermon, Don't Be Afraid, Don't Worry, For God Is In Control. There are so many people who are living in fear right now, some because they have health issues, for others it's because they are living in nursing homes and care facilities, and for many, because they simply don't know how this new virus might affect them or someone they love. The bottom line is, we can choose to be afraid, and we can choose to worry. Or we can put our trust in God's hands and receive a unique peace that only God can give to us. The calling of Jesus is for us to be relaxed during these questionable times, to be carefree, a better word might be cheerful under God's care, under the love of God. For our lives are more precious than anything else God has created. Now that doesn't mean we shouldn't follow some rules. But it, what it means is that we do not need to be living in fear or to worry about what tomorrow will bring. Instead, we're called to trust God and to let God lead us in the right direction. Listen to the health professionals for God can and does use them. Listen to the church, for God can and does use the church. 
and always listen to your heart, for it is from where God leads each of us. I encourage you to stay connected to your church. Call each other to see how everyone is doing. If it is not safe to go to church, watch it via live streaming. Or if your church can't do that, then watch another church or read your Bible and study together as a family as a form of worship. Continue to pray, for your prayers are valuable, much more so than you may know or even believe. Also, please continue to support your church through online giving or by mail, and do this as a form of godly trust. Remember, though we may not be here, we still are gathering together as family, the family of God, and together we can impact this world in very powerful and positive ways. So continue to worship together, continue to pray together, continue to trust God. But worship in itself is important for each of us, especially as we go through this unexpected time of stress. And yes, in my opinion, public worship is the best form. But as of right now, just worship. Worship online, at home, with family, for worship will help us relax and not worry so much about what's going on in this world. And it will allow us to focus on what God can do, not on what's going on around us. Worship gives extra peace and helps us remember that God is with us at all times. During this outbreak, we need to begin to live as never before. We need to begin to live with great faith and trust that God is in control and that just as God takes care of the birds, God will take even greater care of each of us. Because we are created in the image of God, we must know that we are far more important to God than any other part of God's creation. You, me, every one of us are precious in the eyes of God. So don't get in a panic, but instead turn to God with all your worries and concerns. Lay them on the table and let God deal with them and provide you with all the harmony you need to move forward during this trying time. One thing we must keep in, time, in mind is that even in times like this, we can know that God has not abandoned us and will walk with us through these times of struggles as well as through our times of joy. Our job right now is to be in prayer for our world and not to worry about what is to come or whether or not God will truly take care of us. For today's text is pretty clear. Why would you worry about God's care for you if worry adds nothing to your life? So instead of worrying, let's look for moments of delight that put smiles on our faces. Look for those reasons to be at peace because we can see God's at work, hand at work. And let's trust God as we've never done before. So I encourage us, at least we can do is pray. To pray as never before and let's see what God can do through our prayer. 2 Chronicles 29, 1 through 11 is a good passage to read. And it reminds us that we need to pray like never before. We need to pray out of trust. We need to pray as a way to honor God. We need to pray as a way to receive God's peace and healing. Just as Jesus brought healing to, to our world, our prayers empowered by the Holy Spirit continue to bring that healing forward into this moment, into this very time. Fear or worry will not help. Only our trust in God is powerful enough to keep us moving forward. So I encourage you, take time during your busy days and pray. Pray for our elderly and those at highest risk of getting this virus. Pray for protection for our medical professionals as they deal on a daily basis with people who are ill. Pray for our country that the leaders will always do what is best. And pray for continued healing throughout our world. Let us put our trust in God as we move through this time of apprehension and let God's peace fill our hearts instead of filling them with anxiety over something we have no control over. For by putting our trust in God, we will get through this with less stress, more hope, less worry, and more trust 
less fear, and more optimism. God is in control, even when we are not. And God will take care of us in ways that we can't. So let us trust God with all that we have and all that we are. And let's see what God can do for all of us. As Jesus said to his disciples, I say to each of us, never worry about any of your needs. Remember that your life is precious to God. And never forget that worry does not add anything to your life. So trust that God will take care of each of us, always and every day, until it's time for us to meet God face to face. As we continue to move through this frustrating time, and though we may not be medical professionals, we are followers of Christ. And that makes us prayer warriors. So let us show our trust in God through our prayers. No more worries. No more fear. Only trust. So keep in mind that no matter how deep you get in life situations, never let go of God's hand. In some ways, that's what prayer is all about, reaching out and taking God's hand and letting him lead as we go through this time. So I encourage you, continue to pray, continue to trust, and let's see what God is going to do. Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you ever so much for what you're doing, even in the midst of this tragedy for how you walk with us so and how you um, give us strength to move forward. So I seek, Lord, that you would continue to guide and bless, continue to help us to turn to you no matter what's going on. And when all is said and done, Lord, may we discover that we have great reason to celebrate for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen.